All right, welcome back to Cruise Control. My name's Eric, and today we get to talk about that brand new 2022 Toyota Tundra. Let's get to that right now. Welcome to Cruise Control. My name is Eric. And we're gonna start looking at some new cars and used cars to find out what's the best option for you. Let's see what's up next. All right, guys, let's not beat around the bush. Let's look at these wonderful pictures here and let's talk about the good and some of the points that I think maybe Toyota missed out on with this new 2022 Toyota Tundra. And I'm gonna want your opinion on this truck down below. So leave your comments to see if you think it's caught up to all the new things that Ford's been doing, that Dodge has been doing, what Chevy's about to do when they redo their truck. I think on some of the things, it's definitely a home run. I do think there's gonna be a few things that's missed out on. Let's go ahead and talk about powertrain. Gone is the V8, it's 3.5 liter twin turbo V6, but putting down a healthy 389 horsepower and 479 feet pounds of torque. That is gonna go through a 10 speed automatic transmission. Gone are the days of hunting for gears. That is a quote from Toyota through their press release says in the uh, extended cab with the six and a half foot bed, it can tow up to 12,000 pounds, not as much as the Americans, uh, but still 12,000 pounds is quite a bit. Uh, no fuel economy yet, and payload is up to 1,940. Again, not as much as Ford, Chevy, or Dodge, but still a lot. Uh, now for the big engine, which is still the V6 twin turbo, but we're gonna add an electric motor on top. It's a 1.5 kilowatt, uh, battery nickel metal hydride uh, that's not lithium ion but that's fine Toyota still likes to use some nickel metal hydride and they've unlocked some potential by uh, changing some stuff around with that battery pack and it can travel up to 18 miles per hour on EV power alone but for short distances so it's not going to be taking you to work 20 miles and then running on EV only. Maybe, I haven't heard anything, I'm speculating there'll be like a plug-in version that would offer something like that I would love a truck that would offer at least 20 miles of range where I could get to work and not pay any fuel fuel penalty and then be able to tow with it when I want to do stuff. So uh, the tow rating uh, for these vehicles with the uh, uh, iForce Max Hybrid is going to be 11,500 pounds. So pretty good. Uh, the power is 437 horsepower at 5,200 RPM and 583 foot-pounds of torque at 20. 400 rpm so really good power numbers but again no fuel economy estimates they are trying to beat the ford power boost that gets 25 miles per gallon that's their main goal but here's where they did not beat the power boost is there an onboard uh generator no no they decided not to do an onboard generator which is weird because when people lost power in texas for the winter you know what they used to power their home the onboard power generator and that Ford power boost, which is a smart decision. Now, is there gonna be an entire EV version of this truck? I have no idea. I would guess that Toyota is definitely gonna eventually do this because Ford Lightning is already coming out. We know Chevy's gonna do their version of an electrified Silverado. Ram's gonna be doing it as well, so I know Toyota should. Hopefully when Toyota does the EV variant, if not a plug-in variant, there should be some kind of a, uh, generator that you could be able to power your your home or job sites things of that nature so people that are going to use this for a work truck uh, they're kind of missing out on that i really like what ford does with that uh, power generator that's on their power boost that's really good bed sizes are five and a half foot or six and a half foot in the crew cab models or six and a half foot and 8.1 foot in the extended cab uh, cab models a 360 camera is available uh, there's a lot of bells and whistles that you can go ahead and get. I'm not going to get into a bunch of details. This is just a quick overview. When Toyota puts everything on their website where I can spec my own truck as if I was going to buy it, I'm not buying one as of yet. I want to be able to drive it. I will show you every single thing that's an option at that point. Some more things, though, just to, to give you a little bit extra here. The base infotainment is going to be an 8-inch screen, so decent size, but the higher-end models get a 14-inch, so that's a huge screen. Everyone's in love with big screens, so that's cool. 
Some of the models are gonna get a 12.3 inch digital cluster. Uh, most of them are gonna come with analog gauges, but 12.3 inch digital cluster is gonna be pretty cool. I don't have exact pricing. I'm expecting them to start around $36,000 and they should top out around the $60,000 mark. So I ask you guys, did Toyota hit it out of the park? Do I like the styling? Yeah, it's a truck. It looks like a truck, so that part's cool. I like that there's still a TRD. The TRD Pro is gonna automatically come with the hybrid powertrain, which is gonna be really nice when you're out off-roading, rock crawling in sand, certain situations, uh, it's gonna be fun. You can tell that there's different gauge modes for too high and four low and, and four high and all that kind of fun stuff. And they've got different uh, drivetrain modes for snow and to uh, for towing and they got a trailer uh, package that's in there as well. So, you know, there's, there's a nice amount of things that are inside here. I don't think it matches some of the options that certain domestic vehicles come with. Chevy just updated their interior. It looks a lot better. Uh, Ford has the power boost. It has the lightning that's coming out. It can tow more. Uh, actually, all the domestics can tow more. Dodge is going to go with, with theirs, and it's going to have uh, you know, an EV as well. Independent rear suspension, something else I forgot to mention on this new Tundra. It does have independent rear suspension, so that's going to ride better, uh, which it was already a really good riding uh, truck anyways. I hope the steering has a little bit more feel. Uh, the steering on the other Tundras, the 2021s and before, was too light and numb for my taste, so I hope it's got a little bit more steering feel. But again, what do you guys think of this new truck? I like it. I'm not in love with it, but I do like it. I know Toyota's going to have good build quality. Uh, my buddy of mine, he's got a 2010 with a lot of miles on it. I want to say 150 plus thousand miles on there, and it rides like it's brand new. So I know Toyota's going to do really good with reliability. Hopefully with this new powertrain, with this new hybrid, with this new transmission, there won't be that many hiccups that are going to be along the way. Maybe they're going to take a couple of years to get all their, their kinks built out because anytime there's a new model year, you gotta, you kind of have to think about that. But um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I, I do think they should have offered a little bit more towing. I do think they should have offered a, uh, a generator. Uh, there's some, there's some few bits and pieces here that's missing. The interior is fine for me. The exterior is fine for me. I'm not too big on like what a truck looks like. It's more what the truck can do is something more that I care about. So yeah, it looks nice enough for me as a truck on the inside and the outside, but there's some things that I wish it would have done and it would have been an absolute home run, but not bad. What do you guys think? My name's Eric. This is Cruise Control. Thank you for watching.